What if I told you most, if not almost all you know about your kit is based on misinformation? This is sadly the truth for most of the discussions I hear about equipment and gadgets. Almost everything is based on personal assumptions and not facts. A lot of gadgets assumed to be useless are actually very useful. For example, anti-flash goggles and gas mask actually provide ballistic protection. Again. 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 Four shots. With the gas mask being almost as good as the ballistic face mask. With all that said, I hope that in the next couple of minutes I'll be able to show you why a lot of your assumptions about the game are actually wrong. So let's start with talking about long tacticals. I hate how often the launchers are neglected by everyone, considering they're the most powerful tool you can have in your team, regardless of whether you play alone or with a squad. It covers the grenades that you may lose if a teammate dies, allows you to be more flexible with your grenade usage because you have more of them. It can open doors just like breaching shotguns if you really need that. And as of right now, they're broken to the point you can just walk into a room as you stun everyone. Talking about flashes though, what's the difference between flashbangs and stingers and which one should you choose? Well, to be honest, there's no significant difference. Flashes and stingers will stun someone even if they have no direct line of sight to the grenade. This makes the myth of flashes not working if someone is looking away or if there's an object in the way blocking someone's head, false. In that sense, flashes and stingers work exactly the same way. CSGAS and the other hand has the same characteristic as the other two, as in it spreads instantly, aka it's not synced with the animation, which means that even though the animation does not indicate that the room is already filled with the gas, the second it goes off, everything is covered. However, the stun effect with the CS gas is much longer, which allows to lock down a room for longer periods of time. This means that CS gas is without a doubt the meta, as it does exactly what the other two do, but for much longer. You need a gas mask for that to work effectively though, which makes the fact that I mentioned at the start of the video a whole lot more relevant. Gas masks and even NV G serve as ballistic protection currently, with the gas masks having similar if not equal protection effect against smaller calibers as the ballistic face mask, and being on average one shot off of being equal to the face mask in terms of protection against bigger calibers. Interestingly though, face wear and the helmet are attached as one. Having no face wear means you have no helmet, and if your face wear breaks, you lose your entire helmet with it. Ballistic mask and gas mask will protect your entire head, including the back of it, which in theory shouldn't be protected. On the topic of protection though, what is the difference between the different types of plates? Well, essentially just how fast you can accelerate. How fast armor breaks is barely a factor in most cases, as you will die before your armor breaks most likely. The acceleration speed is the only thing armor really changes. Steel will take longer to accelerate than ceramic, but after about 4 steps, both will be walking at the same top speed. Using heavy armor steel plates allows you to, on average, tank one extra bullet compared to ceramic. This comes at the cost of being stuck in place if everything goes wrong. Objectively, if you're a tactical potato with the positioning of a toddler, ceramic is the best armor for you, as it allows you to get out of a bad position faster. If you're able to place yourself in the best position and you don't expect to be caught lacking in the open, then steel is the best one. Does heavy armor protect you more than light armor though? Testing effectiveness of armor is unfortunately very difficult, as knowing how much the armor that you are using actually protected you against a bullet is very difficult. But after many attempts and tests, I came to a definite conclusion. 7.62 and 5.7 bullets, yes I do mean the pistol, break armor the fastest, with it taking around 2 bullets to drain the face and body armor, with the 5.7 obviously taking a couple of more shots after breaking the armor to drain the XP of the person being shot at. 5.5 six and comparable calibers were the third best at breaking armor, and they did more damage to the body than the 5.7 bullets, obviously. Armor penetration is still very much lock based however, and some of my attempts had me breaking armor and almost fully killing people in one shot with a small caliber. It very much will happen that sometimes you will get shot in the face 11 times and your face mask is still not gonna be ruined, and sometimes someone will shoot a 9mm on your vest and you're gonna be almost completely dead, but for reliably killing people. 7.62, 5.56 and 5.7 seem to be the better calibers to killing them. Back to the question about light versus heavy armor though. In theory, one of the benefits you get from heavy armor is that you have armor on your arms. It seems like the armor on the arms is very bugged or very ineffective however, as bullets go straight through your arm and sometimes it can hit your torso, meaning your side armor was pretty useless. From all my testing, side armor rarely, and I do mean rarely, seem to stop that extra bullet a lot of people bring up when talking about picking the heavier option. This leaves only the front and rear armor as effective means to stop bullets. And at that point you might as well just go for the lighter option, with more slots, that obviously being the light armor. With all of that said, you now know the face wear is crucial, and that gas masks protect your entire face, meaning that if you wear it and use gas grenades combined, you will be the most efficient at clearing rooms. On top of that 5.7 should be your preferred sidearm, as it kills the fastest out of all of them. Medium armor is the best armor in general, with steel being recommended to tactical boys and ceramic for potato kings. It still leaves the question of what primary you should use though. To answer that question you should watch my video on optimizing your primary, where I also reveal the primary that is a laser pointer with the right attachment.